Avenue of the Giants is a scenic highway in Northern California that runs along Highway 101 and goes through some of the state's best redwood groves. I've been here many times and the area always blows me away, so on a recent trip I decided to spend an entire day making this video. Here are some of my favorite spots in Avenue of the Giants and let me know what I left off in the comments. We started the day in Santa Rosa and drove two and a half hours north to the town of Garberville for lunch at Woodrose Cafe. After lunch, we hopped back in the car, drove a few more exits, and started our time on Avenue of the Giants. Right when you get off the freeway, don't forget to stop and pick up an auto tour map. 32 miles of redwood exploring is about to happen. The first few miles of the highway start slow with not a lot of tree cover, but pretty quickly you'll be surrounded by some massive trees. We just passed a small town where there's some food and we're entering into the best part of the Avenue of the Giants now. The road through Avenue of the Giants is one that you definitely want to take your time on as it goes through some of the best hikes and groves in Humble Redwood State Park. We're in Boiling Grove, which is the first redwood grove that was saved by the Save a Redwood League, and it's our first stop on Avenue of the Giants. Bowling Grove is a great first stop in the area as it has a good collection of trees and the grove was named for a US officer that was killed in World War I. You can see how small Amy is and how big the trees are. Redwoods. So tall. <laughs> On to the next grove. If you're looking for an easy place to stay, this is the campground. It is closed for the season right now though. Our next stop brought us to the town of Myers Flat, which has one of the most popular attractions in the area, which is a drive through tree. This is one of three drive through trees in the Northern California area, but it's the only one that's in Avenue of the Giants. It costs $10 to enter and note that this is a pretty small tree to drive through. Amy can almost touch both sides. <laughs> almost! <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, this one is a little bit small for our rental car. <laughs> we watched a motorcycle and another car go through very slowly. At least we can go through this one. They do have some other fun things you can explore, like a tree you can walk through, the Shine Cathedral tree, and a tree you can drive on top of. You drove up on a log. Oh, it's so cool. <laughs> From there, it was back into the car and on to our next stop, Williams Grove. This is the Williams Grove. It's a good day use area with picnic benches. It does have an $8 fee though. Williams Grove is one of the only areas on the drive that you do have to pay to access, but if you have a large group, it's well worth it as there's lots of parking which is not common in the other groves. Plus, there's a lot of picnic benches that you can relax at and a nice grove that you can walk through. We continued our drive and pulled out at the Visitor Center. Our next stop is at the Visitor Center. It's a great place to pick up a map or ask any questions that you have about the area. Founding of Oxford University and the Boston Tea Party. The Visitor Center is about the halfway point on the Avenue of the Giants Drive and it has a lot of interesting exhibits that you're going to want to see. By far the most interesting is Charles Kellogg's travel log which is a hollowed out redwood that he put on top of a truck body and that he drove around in the 1920s. It's still on display in the Visitor Center for you to check out. So this area has had some pretty crazy flooding and this sign shows how high the water level was during the flood in the 1960s. And there's no water here now. It's a terrifying thought. <laughs> I'm only showing you a few of the groves but there's dozens in Avenue of the Giants and you can pull out whenever you want to see all the different groves they have. This was just a random grove that we chose to pull out at and it just shows how much there is to explore along this drive that we didn't even get to see.
Our next stop is Founders Grove. We're taking the half mile trail and this is one of my favorite places in all of Avenue of the Giants. On my first drive through Avenue of the Giants, Founders Grove is what made me fall in love with the area. This half mile trail takes you to one of the most beautiful groves in all of California. This tree is 346 feet tall. There's Amy who's 5'3". <laughs> and it goes all the way up. Founders Tree is dedicated to the founders of the Save the Redwoods League who have purchased and protected over 200,000 acres of trees and are the main reason why this area looks as beautiful as it does today. I'll leave a link to them down in the description if you want to check them out. This place is awesome. Watch for signs so that you stay on the correct trail. We're going that way. One of the main points of interest is the Dyerville Giant, which was once the tallest tree in the park at 362 feet before it fell in 1991. You can still see the tree splinters and walk alongside it today. Check out how this tree fell and it just exploded. It shattered and it came even down here as well, next to this gigantic stump. Even though this is only a half mile, this is definitely one of those areas you're going to want to plan some time as it's just such an amazing grove to see. Look at how gnarled this tree is. Amy said that the trees get burls when they go through stress, so that tree has had a lot of stress in its life. Alright, we have one more major stop left in Avenue of the Giants. From Founders Grove, we took the 15 minute drive off the scenic highway to the Big Trees area of the park. We've made it to one of the best spots in the Avenue of the Giants. Just cross this little bridge and you go to Giant Tree and Flatiron Tree. The Big Trees area is much less visited since it's off the main road, so it feels more remote and we even saw some deer while we were there. Last time I was here, this seasonal footbridge was not here. They take it out in the winter and it is a very cold walk across when there's no footbridge. Heading to Flatiron Tree first, then Giant Tree. The Flatiron Tree fell over decades ago, but it was notable for how wide it was. This is Giant Tree, it has a circumference of 53 feet and it was recognized as the champion coastal redwood, whatever that means. Apparently at one point in time, this was the biggest coastal redwood, but I guess bigger ones have been found now. I don't know, it was pretty massive to me and definitely the biggest tree I saw all day. Amy's air hugging the tree at 5'3", and that's a pretty big tree. On the way out of Avenue of the Giants, we made a few more quick stops, the first of which was at Dyerville, which used to be a stagecoach stop and a shipping port, but there's nothing remaining from the town now. Next up, we stopped at Eternal Treehouse, which is a 20-foot room that was carved out of the stump of what is supposedly a living redwood tree. This is one of our last stops. It's a carved out base of a tree known as the Eternal Treehouse. Our true last stop of the day was at Immortal Tree. This is the Immortal Tree. It survived the axe of the loggers, and then it survived the flood of the 60s, and then it got hit by lightning on the top. Just keeps going. That's the end of our time in Avenue of the Giants. Hopefully you enjoyed exploring with us. This is one of the coolest places in Northern California. Get up here and check it out. You can go to CaliforniaThroughMyLens.com for more information and we'll see you on the next video.